This is the chassis from ASIMO Classic, and today we're going to talk in general about de-rusting uh, chassises from vintage strollers. So when you're de-rusting a vintage stroller, just keep in mind that whatever they use in order to produce a chrome finish is probably a bit different than what they use now. I've noticed uh, that it's uh, very easy to overdo using Rust Eater and products like that. You'll get um, a bit of a milky effect. This stroller already has a bit of a milky effect and I think that's just something that occurs with time, something that occurs to the finish. But uh, if you're trying to remove rust areas and you leave rust eater on for too long, you will get that milky caulking effect. So what we're gonna do instead is uh, for the majority of the chassis, we're gonna try to remove the surface rust and this uh, caulking residue that's occurred over time as opposed to with rust eater using, um, this is like a multi-spray, it's essentially WD-40, uh, just sort of a spray grease and a microfiber sponge and we're gonna to try to rub it away. When it comes to using actual rust eater, we're gonna do that on the areas that are more affected by rust. Uh, there's a few bolts on the chassis, and there's like this spring. Um, these are areas where you won't wind up with a chrome finish anyway, but the rust eater will remove the surface rust and will help to treat the rust underneath so that it can't spread and it won't have that uh, strong brown orange look. Another area that we're going to be using a bit of rust eater is uh, on the wheels or the rims of the wheels. We've taken the rubber off to wash them and that's in a separate video. So in the center here, I'm certainly going to be using some rust eater to help to treat that. While uh, on the edges, we will again just try to remove as much as we can with the microfiber sponge and the WD-40. So I'll start by showing what that is going to do. Let me just spray a bit of this on the microfiber sponge. And we're going to start to use some elbow grease and allow that rubbing effects with the microfiber to uh, start to remove what we can from it. We're going to work our way over the entirety of the chassis and then we're going to look at the areas that have not come off easily and assess whether we want to apply a bit of rust eater and leave it for a, a very short period of time at least when it comes to this chrome, these chrome areas. So when you get down to the areas where there's a bit more of uh, the brown rust, the brown surface rust spots, uh, one tip that uh, you can use in addition to using the microfiber sponges is take some aluminum foil and ball it up nice and tight and you still want to use a bit of WD-40 to spray it on and this will help to be a little bit rougher and make it a little bit faster as you start to remove those larger rust areas off. Um, afterwards, you will need to wipe it down, maybe with baby wipes or a wet cloth or something like that. But that'll help to get the sort of medium rust effect, something between that lighter bit that we're taking off with the microfiber sponge 
and what you would something deeper that you would need a rust eater product for. Okay, uh, the next stage in the process is going to be using what the, this product Rust Eater and there are actually a variety of products like this. What it essentially is, is uh, a, an acid filled um, grease I suppose or cream or something. It's, it's instead of it just being a liquid, it's a little bit thicker so that you can apply it. And what we're going to do is take the areas with the worst rust and we're going to apply it over, you know, like uh, spread it over the rusty areas and uh, again because I don't fully trust this product on vintage metal we're not going to just do the whole stroller or very wide areas at one time and leave it because if you leave it too long I, I know it will produce sort of a caulking effect that's going to be a, not very nice so we're going to take small areas of the stroller and we're going to apply the rust eater um, and then we're going to wait, I'm going to try two, three minutes, and then we're going to remove it and then move on to other areas. So you just want to get sort of a thick layer around it. And again, uh, this one is called Rust Eater, but there are a variety of um, different people who make products like this, a, a rust removal products that, can, that are a little bit thicker than a liquid so that you can spread them around. And uh, you'll find that different sorts of metal across the surface of your stroller are going to produce different effects with this product. And we've actually done a video where we show a variety of different sorts of metal and how they react to this product. So uh, if you're unsure, you can watch that video and you can get an idea for what the uh, finished effects of this will be. It'll always make things a bit better, um, but you'll get certainly more out of um, chrome type areas then you will steal like this spring here. I'll do this right away too so you can see. This is, is uh, gonna remove the brown orange rust but it will get a bit white and caulky, but it'll, uh, regardless of how long you leave it on, uh, and it'll leave a certain dark under layer, but it'll look better than it does now. It, it won't have that reddish brown look. And in addition, it supposedly protects it against further rust, so. There is that aspect of it as well. Okay, we're going to leave this for a couple minutes on both this uh, central, central area of this wheel and that spring, and then I'll show you how to remove it. Okay, so it's been on for four minutes now, and I did also apply a little bit uh, around the edge of the rim and on the spokes themselves, as I knew I'd be removing it quite quickly afterwards. Uh, part of the reason for this is that the rust right at the edge of the spoke where it contacts the rim is really a pain in the butt to try to rub away um, you can of course do that, but I find it to be a little bit difficult. Um, and so now you're going to remove the rust eater. And the most important note to know about removing this product is it reacts very strongly with water. You do not want whatever you're using to remove it with to be wet in any way. And later on when you're dealing with the caulking, you again do not want to use water. Uh, the place where you can use water is if some of your plastic elements have gotten the rust eater on it and they've gotten a certain caulking effect, then you can use warm water and soap. But as far as the metal is concerned, you're not at any point going to use water when you're removing this. So what I like to use is either paper towels or toilet paper, something you can get a lot of. And uh, the reason for this is you want to start to remove the rust eater. It's not something you have to rub really hard, but you want to get it off and then you want to get rid of that little piece of paper because as soon as it gets wet from the rust eater, you're just reapplying it. So take yourself a roll of paper towels, a roll of toilet paper, and rip off a whole bunch of little pieces of it and start using them to remove the rust eater.
we're about halfway through the rust removal on the rims. These two have gone through a couple of rounds of rust eater already, whereas the two over here have only had one round applied. And because of how long it took, because it took two rounds on the first pair of wheels, it's caused me to re-estimate the time as around 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and you really don't know until you start working on them. So we're gonna leave that another couple minutes and then we're going to remove them. Uh, looking back over at these ones here, you'll see that for the most part, They've gotten quite shiny, but there are some areas where the rust is still uh, visible. This is most likely um, areas where the rust has actually eaten down through the top chrome layer, and there will always be some degree of discoloration unless one goes about repainting the wheels, which is not, or painting the wheels, which is not something I want to do. So at the end, we'll probably use an abrasive pad and a little bit of WD-40 and try to get a bit more out of there, but uh, that'll be about it for those wheels. Um, because it's gone through two rounds of rust eater each time, I have been wiping it away with paper and I really can't emphasize how much you want to uh, do this as much as possible at this stage. Uh, you want to try to remove as much of the rust eater as possible. Um, all of the rust eater. <laughs> because you won't see that, that caulking, that clouding effect until you know a good eight to ten hours afterwards when the rust eater has fully dried. So even though I consider these free of rust eater, I am in a few moments going to also wipe them down with a terry cloth rag and just really try to get as much off as possible. I can't wipe these enough. Um, because these rims were so rusty, I did apply rust eater to the entire surface and uh, moving slowly because you don't want to overextend yourself into too large an area of the stroller and you certainly won't remove enough of the rust eater. But um, uh, I did re apply Rust Eater to the entirety of the rims and remove it, and I'm really hoping I can avoid that on parts of the chassis. But we'll see as we get to it. It seems like the chassis is in a little bit better condition than the rims other than near the bottom of it. So uh, we'll check back in afterwards. So this is more or less the finished product. Uh, with a project like this, you could always go further and further into it. Uh, the stroller has been rusting for several decades at this point. Uh, but we have managed to restore a very nice chrome finish to the larger area of the uh, chassis itself, as well as to the rims. All of the rims I'm very pleased with. Uh, they've become very shiny and nice. Uh, there is, of course, still a little bit of rust here and there, uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that in case anybody wants to do a project like this and take it uh, even further than I have in this case. Um, so when we're looking at the wheels, you can see, if you remember earlier in the video, how red and brown and rusty it was. And now what's here is this black. And so what this black is, is mostly the rust that's deeper than the surface layer and has been treated with the rust eater. So uh, it's uh, according to the product description, the rust should no longer spread. But if you wanted to uh, clean this up even more, I would recommend using some sort of silver paint. Try to find something that matches it. And uh, you don't want to then go over the whole rim because you want you want the real metal effect. But you can at least do the central areas. Uh, another area you might want to use some sort of paint would be some of these bolts that are very, very deep. Uh, in this case, you could even sand it down real well. Maybe even go as far as to use a Dremel uh, or something so that you could get a real power effect. But in the end, you're still going to have that deeper rust. Uh, and uh, so if you don't want that look at all there, then you would want to paint over some of those areas. Um, looking at the springs, I talked about the springs earlier. So because of the type of metal it is, all you're going to wind up with is removing that surface rust uh, and darkening down the underlying rust and you will get a white caulking. Uh, you can see it a little bit here, it might be a little hard to see. Um, uh, on the other spring here, you can see that that rust is a lot blacker now. Um, but that, that white caulking will show up a little bit in the, more in daylight. Right now we're in studio lighting and so on. But this is the effect uh, you'll get from the processes we've shown in this video. And uh, we feel that it's a nice transformation. Uh, I'll probably do a little bit more wiping down just before I uh, pass it on back to the client. And there were other elements to the restoration of the stroller to deal with as well. Um, but that's, uh, that's the effects you can get with removing rust. And we hope this video has been helpful. If it has been, we ask you to subscribe as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you.